I can think of Andre Crouch uh, playing that song. Back in the day, Larry Reed, he took Andre Crouch out of the... He took a hundred-man choir right out there in, um, on uh, Sunset Boulevard right there in Hollywood. And it stopped traffic and everything, and the glory of God came. He, he told this pastor, let me borrow your choir. He says, what are you going to do with them? I'm going to take them out in the streets. He goes, I don't know. He goes, just let me borrow them. <laughs> <laughs> and as they sang, God moved. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. There's something about... Um, there's something about the name of Jesus, and there's something about the worship. Uh, you guys have access to that name, to speak that name, the name of Jesus. Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. They use that name. Hallelujah. They use that name. We can use that name too. He's given us his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Use that name. When you don't know what to do when you're going through something, use that name. There's power in the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the sound of that name. Miracles are in that name. It's in Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, tonight, um, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Job 36, 11. And for those of you that just got saved, you're thinking it's Job. 36 and 9. Because we've been talking about getting a job. Let him who steals steal no more, but let him work with his hands to give to those that need. Alright. So job, job 36, 11, job 36, 11. I was talking uh, this week uh, to Sherby about this um, scripture. He had preached on it and uh, underlined it. But uh, you know, the, the, the first commandment um, that God had was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And he said the second like it is to love your neighbor as yourself. And I want, I want you to see this scripture um, in Job 36, 11. It says, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years and pleasures. But if they do not obey, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Mm -mm. Um, if you would in your Bible, you can underline the word obey and you can underline the word serve. Yeah. Obey and serve. Mm -hmm. And it says, and you can underline uh, prosperity and pleasures. Hey, you know, there's been a lot of teaching coming forth on the worship. And I think I was just telling you last week, the Lord had, he, he, he spoke to me and said, you need to spend some time in worship. And I repented to the Lord uh, because of the busyness of life. When I'm standing before God in, in you know, 80 years or however long I live, my, you know, King David said, teach me to number my days, oh God, you know, let me be wise with my time, let me, you know, make sure. Uh, Warren Buffett said, I have plenty of money, I want to buy my time, because time is a limited commodity for me. Mm -hmm. It says the children of, of darkness are more wise in their generation than the children of light. You got to understand, you know, you got the old song, time is on your side. Yes, it is. Well, I got to tell you, no. It's going to no, run it's out. Not. And what you're going to do for the Lord, you need to do it today. All those songs yeah. are wrong. Like, only the good die young. No. It says wisdom in the right hand is, you know, riches and honor in the left hand and length of days or whatever. These are all bad confessions with good tunes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got to get away from that. So, um, you know, when, when we're talking about this, we got the Lord. I, I heard Normal Hayes say one time, he said the Lord spoke to him and says, my people, they, they, they live way beneath, way beneath their means. My people, the people of my church live way beneath their means. And he says, what do you mean, Lord? And he said, he said they, don't, they don't worship me. They don't love me. Mm. He goes, well, no, no, hold on. I've been with a lot of Baptists and a lot of Presbyterians and Pentecostals and different ones, and, and, and they, do, they do love you. 
says, no. He says, I have much more for them. But, and, and he said to Norval, he says, you too. He goes, well, God, don't include me in this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and he was talking about worship. That if you serve and obey, your, your years will be in, in prosperity. And uh, your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. And he, said, and he said, they don't. They don't worship me. And I think that's where Norval Hayes got that teaching on worship. And Dave Roberson took it a step further with some of his teaching. But, you know, he would get down and, and he would just spend time worshiping God in the morning and in the afternoon. He'd get on his knees by his bed. And he would raise his hands. I love you, Jesus. Oh, I worship you, Father God. Oh, I worship you and I love you. I love you, God. I magnify you, Jesus. I worship you, Holy Spirit. I worship you, King of Kings, creator of all things, the great I am. Oh, how beautiful are you? How holy are you? Worthy is the Lamb. And you know, he would, he would, you, you know, they would go on like this. And Sherby's been talking about this. And tonight, the Lord, um, he prompted me to talk about loving him. And that's something that, that I know that we may be uh, familiar with this, but we need to do it. We need to get into a place where we're doing the word and not just hearers of the word. Hallelujah. And, and um, when it comes to Jesus' sayings, he says, if you'll pray in secret, if, you, if you'll do these things in secret, I'm going to reward you openly. Oh, you know why God is wanting me to worship him? Is because he wants to bless me. That's right. Because God loves all people. <clears throat> he loves them. And he is love, and so he wants the best for them. Somebody with a twisted, carnal mind would think, well, why does God want this, this worship? You know? What, what, what is it? What's he trying to, in other words, get out of me? Let me tell you this, he's trying to get stuff to you. I run into people sometimes that, that um, are mad at God and they have not forgiven God and, and they're bound up and they've gone through things in this life that they don't understand and if they would know the Father, if they would begin to worship Him, all the chains would break off their life. It would, it would totally be destroyed. I want to show you uh, 2226, uh, Job 2226. Verse 21 says, Now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby good will come to you. <coughs> Some people aren't at peace. Some people run around, you know, with all kinds of things. And I, I know things can get pretty hectic in the work situation or whatnot, but you guys all need to take time to, to spend time with God and acquaint yourself with God. And in verse 26 it says, For then you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. And will make your prayer to him. He will hear you. And you will pay your vows. You will also declare a thing. And it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. When you cast. When they cast you down. And you say exaltation will come. Then he will save the humble person. He will deliver one. Who is not. He, he will even deliver one. Who is not innocent. Yes he will. He will be delivered by the purity of your hands. He's talking about you actually going in and rescuing other people because of your walk. Yes. Um, if you know the Lord, if you worship the Lord, you'll have something that comes on you. Yes. And this is this is really good. Um, let's turn to 1 Corinthians 2 9. I want to just take you in a couple of scriptures to, to encourage you. Um, tonight. The, the message is the first commandment. The first commandment is the name of the message. First Corinthians 2 9. It says, I has not seen, nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. See, we just saw in His Word that He's going to fill your days here with pleasure and prosperity. But now He's talking about, I believe in a place 
um, that, that he's prepared. So it's a future sense that he's talking about. So now he's talking about a future blessing. He's talking about a blessing now and a blessing later. Are you getting this thing? Yes. He said, my people live beneath their means. They live way beneath their means. Remember when Jesus said this, he walked out there and he says, your sins are forgiven. And I mean, they fold their arms and their cheeks puffed up. How dare you say that? And he says, which is easier for me to say? Your sins are forgiven or be healed. It's all part of the covenant. Hallelujah. It was all purchased. Yeah. So was your prosperity right. and your blessing. Yes. Sherby said this a couple of times, and it's from the word, that the people of God are living way beneath their financial needs and their standard, struggling to eke out a resistance and saying, I'm too busy to worship because I've got to take care of all these problems. But if they would stand back and worship God, all those problems would, would just, they would, they would begin to melt away. See, it's, it's the prison is in, in the way you think and in your mind. Do you think that Jesus ever walked around during the day and worried about where his finances were coming from to meet no. his needs? No. Do you think he ever wondered, you know, how am I going to meet my needs? What do I have to do to get the Father to meet my needs today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't happen. He said, do you have a little faith? Do you remember the multiply bread and all that? But, but the Lord lived in a state of worship. He got up early before the morning and he spent time with the Father. He worshiped. God, Jesus spent time worshiping. And Jesus said, when I go, I'm going to send you the spirit of truth. And he's going to come. He's going to teach you. He's going to lead you into all truth. Has anybody here really gotten to know the spirit of truth? Mm. Have you asked spirit of truth? I want to get to know you. Have you done it? You need to get to know the spirit of truth because there's a lot of spirit of lies out there. Yes. You've got to know the spirit of truth. Well, how do you do that? We've been teaching on it. You pray in tongues. You get acquainted with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth. He who prays in an unknown tongue prays not unto man, but unto God. He himself doesn't understand what he's saying, but his spirit is edified, it's built up. The Spirit of Truth is praying through you. The Holy Ghost is generating this prayer through your spirit, and God the Father is answering it. You can get to know the Spirit of Truth. Hallelujah. You need to get to know the Spirit of Truth. Now, I know that, that uh, Sherby's going to do this demonology on Wednesday, but I want to give you a scripture. I want to show you how Jesus beat the devil. This is a little prelude, a little taste. Um, Matthew 4, 9, it says this, And he said to him, All these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. This is what Satan is saying now. Um, and listen to what he says Jesus, then Jesus said to him away with you Satan for it is written you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve worship serve underline those two, two, two uh, things remember we underlined obey and serve worship and serve and, and notice, notice now Satan has a false kingdom that's set up that's a copy copy of what God is doing God, our creator, is not a copier. He's a creator. Hmm. He doesn't copy anointings. He doesn't copy. There's a fresh and individual anointing and gift for each one of you that God has created and put on you. If you go out and look at the leaves of a tree, each leaf of a tree is, is specifically created differently. No two are the same. Not one snowflake in all of time has been the same, they say. That's amazing to think about. And they're the most beautiful array of colors and design of the snowflakes. But he said here, Satan is trying to get Jesus to worship him. And he says, he says this, um, and again, the devil took him up to an exceedingly high mountain in verse eight and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever seen anywhere in the Old Testament or the New Testament where God ever gave Satan any of the kingdoms? Nope. God never gave Satan the kingdoms. Nope. Man had given his right away, but then Jesus came back and beat the devil and has placed that in the church's hand. We've got authority over the devil. But Satan, 
he had looked at all these, you know, took Jesus and, and showed him all these kingdoms. I wonder if Satan has taken some of these gifted rock stars and said, hey, look at what I can give you if you'll just serve me instead of God. Mm. And they sell out in their gift. They're supposed to be singing for Jesus, but they end up singing, singing for money and drugs and they end up losing everything. But, but look at this. Satan was bent on copying God. He said, you worship me. And, and uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, you know, he's trying to imitate God. But the Bible's not going to work for you. The word of God's not going to work for you if you do not do the first commandment. And Jesus said this, the first commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then, then he didn't even take a breath. And he says, and love thy neighbor as thyself. On this hang all of the law and prophets. Yes. I want you to know this is the word, this is the law. It hangs on it. If you see somebody that's got a lot of Bible knowledge, but they don't love God or they don't love people, they're far away. Yes. They're in a dangerous place. They're in religion. For you to come to truth of God's <laughs> word and not to get to know him or change is a dangerous place to be. Because nobody can truly come to God and stay the same. They change. Yes. yes. He said here, Jesus said, away with you, Satan. He resisted him. You shall worship the Lord your God and him only will you serve. He showed you how to beat the devil. Right there. Right there, he showed you how to beat the devil. He said, you know, first of all, don't worship him and resist him. Yes. Let's keep on looking at some scriptures. I want to give you a couple more scriptures here. Um, go to Matthew 22, 37. love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is, this is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If you don't spend time loving God or worshiping God, you are not going to get the benefits from the Word of God. That's right. From the Bible. That's a, that's a heavy one right there. That's a, that's a real heavy one. Um, I want you to turn to uh, uh, Mark uh, twelve thirty. It hangs. He said. He said it this way, in Mark, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like it. Like this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other great. There is no other commandment greater than these. You need to. You need to know those scriptures and underline them in your Bible. There's great victory in this. In this. Uh, this teaching right here. Um, and I want you to see something. Turn to. Turn to Luke ten twenty seven. But brother, I know that this is a commandment. Well, how do you do it? You worship God. Mm -hmm. You worship God. You spend time worshiping Him. Well, what if I don't feel anything? Keep doing it. You yes. Know, but you worship Him whether you feel it or not. We walk by faith, not by sight. That's right. Not by feelings. Nope. Luke 10, 27. Hallelujah, Jesus. So He answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered right in me. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among thieves. And he, he tells him a story, you know, about the, the, uh, 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 the, the good Samaritan. You guys may know the story. Mm -hmm. But... He's laying, God is laying this out to show who, who's your neighbor. Who's your neighbor? The first commandment together is coupled with love and people. If you don't love people, then it's not a great, you know, it's not. Last time um, when, when we were at Snake River, um, I said, Lord, what do you want me to share? 
You know, and, and uh, the Lord said, I want you to share out of 1 John where I said, I think it's in 1 John, where he says, if you say that you love God but don't love your brother who you can see, the truth is not in you. That's You're right. a liar. Yep. You're not the real deal. Right. And I, and, I, and I stood up there and I said, you know what, you men in this prison, and they're all sitting, you know, the Mexicans are here, the blacks are here, the Indians are here, the whites are here. And I said, if you don't sit next to somebody of a different color of skin, then you're not really a Christian. You're fake. And man, the cactus went up. I had a few gang members. I said, if, if, in fact, if you, did, if you uh, snub your nose at somebody who Christ has redeemed because of the nature of your crime, if you know what I'm saying, some crimes don't have a lot of honor in the joint. And you persecute a man who's truly born again and saved, you're not the real deal. That's right. You need to repent. Yep. That was not an easy message, you know, to, to bring forth. And some guys got mad, they walked out. Some guys came to the altar and cried. But the thing is, is, is that our neighbor are the believers and the unbelievers. Yes. All people. God's blood was shed for everybody. All people. Not some of them. Right. You got to release anger in your heart tonight. But I guarantee you this, if you get into this worship that I'm talking about, those people who've offended you and hurt you, that anger cannot stay. It will come to the surface. Yes. It will come to the surface and it's going to leave you. It's going to it's going to go from you. Um, praise God. Let's uh did we go to uh, Mark 12:30? Yes. We did. Okay. Um, I'm looking for I'm looking for the, um, the scripture. I think it's in, let's go to Matthew 2, uh, 2. No, let's go to Mark 5, 6. I believe it's there. I want you to see something real quick. I want to share some, some other scriptures. Always bring your Bible and always mark your Bible because it's important that you guys have scriptures to fall back on. You need the Word of God to stand on. This is what gives you the power to overcome. This really does. You need, to, you need to understand how, how important. Um, okay, so in this story here, there's a man who's demonized in, uh, in Mark uh, 5, 6. But let's, I'm going to back up here. I'm going to go um, to uh, 5, 1. And you hear this story. Then they came to the other side of the sea and to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one could bind him, not even with chains. So this guy, he was snapping chains like the power team. Have you ever seen those good old guys snap chains? But he was doing it with demons, not with strength. And, and uh, it says, because he often uh, had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. I've never seen a grown man break shackles in pieces. Not even in the Western movie. Neither could anyone tame him. Sounds like my dog. <laughs> and always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. Now this guy is messed up. We've had him come with their wrists were cut, you know, by blades and stuff, and got him free of unclean, tormenting spirits because Jesus is alive, and he's living in us right now, and he's able to do it here, and he's Hallelujah. doing it here even now. And so here's a man who's cutting himself with stones. And let me say this about, about unclean spirits. They try to get you to kill other people or kill yourself. They hate you. They hate people. And when he saw Jesus so far off, he ran and worshipped him. Now look at this. He's worshipping the Lord, this man. I like this. Just because somebody's sitting in church lifting their hands and worshipping the Lord doesn't mean that they're totally free. This guy wasn't free yet. But you can't worship God and not get free. That's right. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, This is the demon speaking. What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he, he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, Legion, for we are many. Also he begged him earnestly that he would not send him to the out into the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there in the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine, 
that we met her then. And at once Jesus gave them permission, and the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. And there were about 2,000, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. Well, listen to this. That other part wasn't really what I was trying to point out. I just want to finish the, 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 the story. Because I don't like it when preachers don't finish the story. I had a guy working with me in the prison ministry. He only had the power to preach. And every time he would share a story about his life, and right when he was going to get to the, uh, you know, where the, the, the answer came, the time would run out. So the inmates got so frustrated, they said, listen, man, we've got 50 unfinished stories, and we've had it. And, and the preacher was only giving the part of the story that went with the revelation he was giving, but the people wanted to hear that, you know, they wanted to complete. <laughs> Jesus never stopped halfway through a parable and said, okay, I'll give you the rest later. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tune in next but, week. But this man worshipped God, demonized. You can worship God if you have unclean spirits attacking you. That's right. And you'll be free. Whether there are some that are attacking from the outside or hindering you, you'll be free. I, we've had people come in and, and they've been so hindered to worship God. All kinds of bad thoughts come in their mind when they're worshiping. I tell them, keep worshiping God. Keep praising God. Keep rebuking the devil. And they get free. Why? Because... You can't worship God and not be free. Here's a man who was, you know, crushing chains into pieces. And he recognized Jesus. This man, this man had more understanding than the scribes and Pharisees who had the word of God. That's right. The scribes and Pharisees were searching the scriptures and Jesus says, I stand before you and he. Sometimes the people in the nightclubs and the people out there that Jesus is trying to reach, they've got more understanding of truth. Then not sometimes. Religion is a very scary thing. It's false written worship. It says you have a form of godliness, but you, you deny the power. You deny the power. You need to you need to see this tonight in worship. Let's go to. I want to see, I want to show you something in Psalms twenty nine. I want to show you guys a couple of scriptures. The greatest commandment on all of this hang the law and the prophets. On all of this, loving God, loving your neighbor. Psalms 29.2. I want to take you through a couple of scriptures that David, David had such a, a praise. And you have to understand me that praise is not just music, even though music can assist worship. It's you praising God. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, what Shirley was saying about turn off the CD and worship God. What? You're kidding. I can't do that. How will I know what to say? That's, that's where it gets good. You've got to talk to God and love on Him. Just like you would, um, you know, if you were trying to, you know, win a date for the first time or whatever. You know, whispering sweet words. And, uh, but you speak to God from your own heart. From the out of the abundance of your own heart, you talk to God. And, and do, do it with, with CDs too. Nothing wrong with CDs. But, do, but be free to worship God without somebody else leading you in. Yes. And it says, give unto, the, give unto the Lord the glory due His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalms 29, 2. Let's turn to Psalms 45, 11. You guys can write down these scriptures. God's people are grossly living beneath their means. And it's the key is the worship. It breaks off fear. It breaks off all the hindrances. It opens the door for God's prosperity, His blessing. It, 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 it encourages your heart to love God. In fact, I'm going to go to say this. The Lord was ministering this to me. He said, do you know, son... If my people would worship me more, we would have greater effect in, in evangelism and, and, and we would have to do less missionary efforts. Yep. Yes. And I thought to myself, what is the first thing, you know, Reinhardt Monkey does when he gets out there on, on you know, in Africa and says, let's give Lord praise, hallelujah, and you got two million people praising God and the glory of God comes down. The Lord spoke to him when his tent became shredded into a smithereens. He says, 
your praise and worship going up will be the tent posts. And my glory coming down shall be the canopy. Hallelujah. Man, that's a, that's a prophecy, brother. Right on. 45, 11. So the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Worship him. Worship him. And that's, that's um, let's turn to 66.4. Psalm 66, 4. And, and obviously, a lot of these psalms were, this was actually a music book. This was written as a hymnal back in their day. And this, uh, these words have a lot more poetry in the actual uh, original language of Hebrew. They rhyme, and it goes together a lot more, if you know Hebrew. So, so this, these, these psalms, a lot of these that you're seeing and reading, David, they, David would play these. He would actually sing these. Um, 66, 4. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Let's go to 95 6, Psalm 95 6. A lot of turning. But you can write these scriptures down and you can go back and look at them. Psalms 95 6. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion, as in the day of the trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me. They tried me, though they saw my work. And then he goes on. For forty years I was grieved with the generation and said, It is my people who go astray in their hearts, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. The Bible says that, that we need to work to enter into the rest of God. Worship gets you into the rest of God. Yes. It'll get you into the rest of the peace of God. Worship will. And he said, he says right there, um, you know, that um, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord your Maker. And, and Jesus said, these people worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You gotta, you gotta, you know what? You gotta test your heart. You gotta get a hold of your heart on these things. Let's go to, to 96, um, uh, 96, 96, 9. It says, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. Psalms 99, 5. I mean, and these are just a, a, just, just a handful. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. My goodness. Uh, Psalms uh, uh, and then verse 9, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. It, it repeats itself. Uh, Psalms 132, 7. Turn, turn there and, and you'll see, you know, all the way through there, he's, he's really encouraging the people of God to worship. 132, 7. Let us go into his tabernacle. Let us worship at his footstool. That's 132.7. 138.2. And this is, this is, um, I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Come on. This good stuff. I'm going to read that again. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For your, you have magnified your word above your name. I'm, uh, I'm not going to live. Um, I'm not going to live beneath. You know what? Where, um, where God wants me to be. Even the wise men. The wise men didn't have the New Testament, but they saw a star. And they came and they, they found Jesus out. They worshipped Him. They worshipped God. Worship. Ephesians 5.18. And you don't have to turn there. But it says, Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking to yourself, self, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Yes. He says, Don't be drunk with wine. Don't be drunk with wine, which is dissipation. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. A lot of people in our culture today try to escape with drugs and alcohol. And God is saying, man, don't, don't do that. He says, find your rest in me. Come in me. 
He says, speak a psalm, a hymn, and spiritual song. Sing and make a melody in your heart to the Lord. You need to learn to worship God when the pressure comes on you. Yes. Between the time that you're believing God for a miracle and the time that your miracle comes, one way that you can minister to your soul is by getting lost in worship. It causes your soul to ride out the storm when you believe in God. You move with faith. You're declaring God for some things physically, for um, finances, for relationship, maybe where you want to be in God. And, 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 and you're fighting and, 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 you're, and you're, you're serving God with all your heart, but you don't see it come to pass. Begin to worship, stay in worship, and it will keep your emotions in check. Because sometimes people, man, they, they, they can't handle the walk of faith. They're walking with God, they're believing God for something, but it doesn't happen. And so they can't come and say, it doesn't work. And I say, it does work. It says that the prophets of old, it says that they were fully persuaded. Right. They weren't partially persuaded, they were fully, fully persuaded. persuaded. As you worship God, you begin to see like He sees. You're, you change, your attitudes change. The presence of God comes on you. And as you walk down the street, people will actually literally, physically, tangibly, sometimes feel the presence. You'll shake somebody's hand or you'll talk to somebody. And, and they'll feel that presence of God because His presence, His glory is on you. You know, worship is, is a huge key. Yes. How do you show God your love? I love God. Well, let me ask you this. How much time do you spend with God in worship? You know, if you love somebody, you spend time with them. Yes. When you first fall in love, when you get, you know, when you're young and you know, you get married or whatever, you spend a lot of time with that guy or that girl because you love them. Don't sit here tonight and tell me you love God and you never spend time with Him. Now, I know for a fact the devil will do anything he can to beat you guys up to keep you out of worship and out of the Word. And sometimes somebody drags himself into church looking to get encouraged because they've had such a hard week at work and all hell is beating on them. So I'm not here to kick you and push you down. I'm here to tell you that if you want to get the victory and you want to stay in the victory, get into some worship. That's right. If you, if you want to live above the means that you're living in now, get into worship. Praise the Lord. Well, brother, I thought it was an education that would get me there. Well, in the, in the Proverbs it says get wisdom and get knowledge and those things. But truly, it's worship and the favor of God that opens up all the other doors. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. And Jesus is wisdom. The spirit of truth has wisdom. I know a lot of educated idiots. <laughs> and I know a lot of people that have way more money than some people that are educated. But that's not even what I'm getting at. You're going to get far more in this worship thing that you would ever get. But I can tell you this. A lot of people are broke as a joke, and they're going around living in defeat and living all kinds of problems, and they're wondering, well, God, why am I in this position? But if you were to look at how much time they spend in worship or how much time they spend with God, they don't spend any time at all. They're not scheduling any time. Oh, yeah, they'll schedule time for the gym. They'll schedule time for soccer games. They'll schedule time for this, that, and the other, for football games. For boxing, for UFC championship, for wrestling, for sports. But what about worship? What about praying in the Holy Spirit? Now, I've hit hard on praying in the Holy Ghost. But the Lord had convicted me of, on this worship thing. And so that's why I'm talking to you tonight. If we don't obey the first commandment, none of the other word of God is going to work for us. That's right. Well, how do we do that? We worship, worship. the Lord, our maker. Amen. We worship him. In spirit and truth. You can worship tongues and you can worship just in your regular prayer language. And worship brings the, the victory. It creates an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the great miracle healing evangelists like uh, T.L. Osborne and these guys, Benny Hinn and, and uh, you know, uh, Reinhardt Monkey and some of these guys, they'll spend time, you know, during the day before a meeting and they'll be in there for four, five, six hours. Just worshiping, 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 worshiping to get up to a place of victory, you know, to usher the Lord's presence in. And a lot of times when we first get start getting into the worship, we got so much pressure coming against us and so many things in our mind that's just beating us up. 
and I'll, I'll sometimes put a notepad down by my, my, my bed or wherever, and I'll write things down. Because my mind will say, you got to do this. You can't be spending time doing this. You can't do this. All these things need to be happening. And so I'll tell my mind, listen, you're not included in controlling this situation. Amen. But I'm going to take note of these things that you're telling me because that's the way, you're, that's the way you operate, mind. So once I write it down, my mind will relax. Good. He's not going to forget about that. And so, you know, I'll write a few things down, and then I'll get into worship. And, and, and that's just me, you know what I mean? Because that's the way my mind is. Um, so, but the thing is, is that, that we got to get in there, man. we gotta, we got to push past, and, and, and we got to realize that until you guys are really serious about the worship key, you're going you're gonna to live in some defeat. we got to do it. we got to be doers of it tonight. So why don't you, why don't you stand to your feet? And um, let's take a minute. Let's take a minute to worship the Lord. I don't want to see anybody here. I don't want to see anybody here living beneath what God has for them. And, and at the same time, I'm almost a little hesitant to bring that out because I, I don't want people to worship just to get prosperity financially, even though they need it, and that's part of the kingdom. But even if they come to God with a motive of worship to get financial gain, God will get, get you in a place where your heart will be right, and He'll set things in order. If you'll spend time with Him, He'll get you right. And then you, you realize that the main thing it really wasn't the finances, it wasn't knowing Him, it wasn't believing Him. It was living right. in the fear. You know? Our greatest problem is not financial lack. Our greatest problem is not knowing Christ fully and totally surrendering ourselves to Him and, and, and yielding ourselves to Him. Jesus was fully yielded to Him, and guess what? He wasn't stressing about out about 5,000 people that didn't have anything. He just says, what do you got? All right, let's break it. And He anointed it. Yeah. And the Lord, and you know what God is saying, and if you'll give yourself to Him, the people that are here, there's nothing that you can't do. There's nothing that, that's impossible for you. And there's miracles in your hands. There's souls and there's divine appointments. There's miraculous finances. There's the kingdom of God going forth that's available if you'll learn to get into this thing. This first commandment, this most simple commandment. But did you know that I hadn't fully obeyed this? And I had to repent before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to do it. And I'm excited right now about the things that God is going to bring after stepping into this. I'm excited about the, the miracles and, and the healings and the deliverances and the kingdom of God rising up as I begin to do this. The Lord knows that I need His strength and that I need Him. Mm -hmm. He wants me to worship Him for, for my benefit, not for His benefit. Yeah. And I didn't have time. I had another scripture tonight, but read John 4. That's your homework. And Jesus, you know, he says the Father is waiting a long time for true worshipers to worship Him in spirit and truth. And we are those people right now. Yes. You've got a new nature on you. You're not living like David under the old covenant without a new nature. Each man, woman, and child in here that's born again, the Spirit of God dwells in you. And God wants you to worship Him with fullness. King David didn't even have a new nature. He was looking forward to it. And he worshiped crazy worship and brought the house down. How much more those who the Spirit of God dwells in this day? How much more? Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lord, Lord, tonight I, I ask, Lord, that, that uh, this message would encourage some folks to, to do some private worship. I'm not even so, even though, Lord, I do want to worship you right now, Lord, I'm I'm asking for the change. I'm asking for the change in the heart. God, for the chains, the chains on the minds and the wrists and the feet of people to fall off. God, for us to catch ourselves in the busyness of life. Lord, we need to number our days. Those things that we're going to do for you, let us do it now. Today's the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't put it off. I don't put it off. I don't put it off because of the, the seriousness, Lord, of where we're at. Lord, it says those who know you will be strong and do great and mighty exploits. And Lord, that's Lifehouse Church. That's these here. God, I ask, Lord, for 
a yieldedness, a willingness, and an obedience, Lord, to this message that's been coming forth. And it's been preached a few times. But Lord, you opened it up so heavy to me this week to show me that none of the word works if you don't do the first things. We return to our first love. We return to the first things. So tonight, God, I ask that you would turn the keys in our heart. Lord, I ask, Lord, that there would be a seriousness of worship. That we would concentrate on you. We forget about ourselves, concentrate on you and worship you. Not just here, not just on Saturday night, but God, Lord, in our homes. And Lord, I ask, Lord, right now that you would bring a glorious worship team, several of them, to this church. Different worship teams to come together with a heart not to be exalted or to, to have a show, but to truly honor you. Worship teams with the right heart. God, I ask for those laborers to come in here. Those musicians, those psalmists, those minstrels, Lord, to break the chains, to open the atmosphere. Lord, I ask for it now in Jesus' name. Now let's just, let's just lift our hands. It says, let men everywhere, and that's women too, lift your hand, holy hands. You're holy because of the blood of Jesus. Without wrath or doubting. That means you don't have unforgiveness to your neighbor. And that means that you're not an unbeliever who doubts. We lift holy hands. No wrath or doubting. God, we believe you. We lift our hands to you now. In unity, God, we worship you. And we magnify you, Jesus. And we glorify your name. Oh, just begin to praise the Lord. Lord, we worship you.